And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Saloon Tycoon. This is from Van Ryder Games, and it really looks good. I remember the first games Van Ryder did, and they were, you know, they looked like an independent small publisher, but now his stuff really looks sharp. And this one kind of uh, drew my attention because of the three-dimensional look of the, the things. As the game goes by, you are going to be building um, buildings that are going to be coming up off the board. Now that three-dimensionalness is there mostly for looks, but it does matter, I mean, because you, you're gonna be able to put roofs on your board and get pieces. Um, so let's take a look at this game in which you are trying to build a pretty cruddy town, honestly. You're building a saloon and poker rooms and brothels, and I guess you get to build a couple school rooms and kitchens and laundries while you're at it, but for the most part, it's not the most pleasant of Western towns. So players are trying to score the most points in this game, marked on a point track here. They're going to be doing so by building up a saloon. Each player is going to start with a saloon tile that's already here. And that's good because each floor of any building that they build is worth one income. So they're going to keep track of their income with a little dude. The other dude is going to be on the point track. Now, on your turn, each player is going to have a turn, you essentially, the first thing is you get your income. So you look down here, and I'm one income, yay! And the income, of course, is these beautiful gold nuggets. Now, after you get your income, you can take one tycoon action. So there's various different tycoon actions that can be taken over the course of the game, and they're pretty simple. One could simply be just take two gold. So you can take two gold as one of your action. Another could be to draw two tycoon cards. Now there are many different tycoon cards and you can play one as an action too. So a tycoon card, maybe this one here, just gives you eight gold, but everyone else gets two. This one just gives you six gold. This one gives you some, uh, lets you build some buildings. Some of them give you supplies. Now supplies are important. There's gonna be a certain number of supplies in the game. Supplies, when they're all gone, are gonna trigger the end of the game, but you need supplies to finish something. So to finish my saloon here, to give you my seven points, I need to put supplies on that, and then I can build another room on top of it. So I might build the billiards room. This is gonna cost me four gold, but when it's done, I get that action for free. So I can put this on top of it, and then I could put supplies on that one, four supplies on that one, and I can build another room. Let's say maybe I will build the theater. This costs 10 gold and it needs to be above the saloon, so that's good. And then when if I build this one, it gives me the character Purdy Nelly. So I can build that one on top of there. And when that one is finished, then I have the opportunity to put a large roof on this one. And a large roof is worth an extra four victory points. So that's always a cool thing. And then I'm finished. Players also have the ability to build small spots. So on the bottom four, I might want to build the, let's see, I'll build the, the stables. Stables is eight gold, but it has to be the first floor and it gives me Cactus Golby. So I put that here and that's, if I can get three supplies on that, then I can build another one on top of it. Maybe I can build the pantry here next to it. Now you, I can keep putting single fours or I can always put a double four on top of two singles, but you can't do the other way around. Now, some of these spots, when you put things on them, are going to cost you more gold, but they also give you more victory points as you place them. And you're going to have to keep track of any requirements. So, for example, to have the jail, you need to have 10 gold, and you need to have the, the poker room. Um, you know, the poker room itself, if you build it, it's going to, it costs 6 gold to put it out, but when you finish it completely, you're going to get a reward of 4 gold, which is pretty neat. So players have these different buildings that they're going to be building. Now I keep mentioning putting supplies on them. You'll notice there's some cards that give you supplies. Other than that, at any time on your turn, you can pay two gold each for a supply. So getting gold is gonna let you get the supplies that you can put out there. 
So on your turn, you can earn gold, draw two Typhoon cards, play a Tycoon card, build one of these tiles, or you can bribe a character. Now, there are many different characters that are going to be in this game. There are many good characters that will show up due to different buildings being built. So the first person to build the schoolroom gets Miss Watson. The first person to build the stables gets Cactus Colby. And these people here are worth five points at the end of the game if you have them. There are also some negative folks who are going to show up. Like the first person to build a citizen um, to get one of these good people is going to get Sidney Smythe. And the first person to have 10 gold on their turn is going to get Flatfoot Fleming. And each of these people are going to, not only are they they're possibly worth negative points at the end of the game, like this male outlaw, but some just do mind it. It's like, if you have her, you lose one income every turn. If you have her, you have to discard a Tycoon card to play one. If you have him, then the you have to, when you put the supplies down, they cost you three instead of two like everyone else. And this guy's just worth minus five. So you can bribe somebody and pay them to essentially go from one person to another. Six gold to move, you know, steal someone from somebody else or to move someone that you don't like over to someone else's in front of their area. Now, players are doing that to get the points and special abilities of these, but they're also going to do it because there are open claims. There's going to be a certain number of open claims on the board based on the number of players. And the first person to do these can claim one. So if I have the poker room, billiards room, and a whiskey still, I can claim Sin City for eight. From the third person to have three male characters, I can claim this one for six. If I have these exact three people, I can get eight. So these cards are open. And players are going to start the game with two secret claims in their hand too, which are very similar except no one knows you have these. So if I have these two exact people at the end of the game, I will get 16 points. Um, you, you don't get to more of these over the course of the game. You're just going to get, there's going to be some of these that anybody can claim, and then each player will start with two. That's pretty much it. You're going to be taking those actions until all these uh, supplies are gone. At that point, the game is over. Uh, you will, you know, like I said, many of the different tiles give you special abilities. Like this lets you take any action to hammer. This one lets you take a supply cube. This one lets you play another card. Some just give you straight up points. And then this tells you your turn order, and that's pretty much it. Most points at the end is the winner. Now, there's a lot that I like about this game. I like the different buildings that you can build. I like the fact that, you know, you can try to spread out on the bottom real quickly. It's easier to put buildings out there. The problem with putting buildings out there is that they're going to cost you more, but they might get you more points. Building up lets you put those roofs on, which are kind of extra points and also looks cooler than everyone else's. So that's good. I like that each turn is simple. I like take some gold, play some cards. Um, the, the rule book is really well done. It is very clear, has nice illustrations, shows you a setup. Just that's how rule books should look. The boards themselves are nice. I like the, the layout of the board. You can even reverse it if you want. I like how you can put all the boards together and form kind of a, you know, it's not a big deal, but I just like the fact that the boards can go together and you see the little roads of the town. And it just looks good. The artwork is good. It has a nice theme to it. The components, the, the supplies and the, the gold, the supplies are supplies, but they also become pillars of the building. So that all works together and is good. This game is solid, but... Okay, a few things I do not like about the game. Um, first of all, I'm not sure that the Tycoon cards are created equal. And it can seem not so quite much as fun if someone has cards that, for example, the cards that give an extra action, like, for example, this one here. This is the Builder. It gives you four gold and take another action. That's what that hammer means. Or this one here, which is two extra actions. That, that Well, I mean, it's only really one extra action because you spend an action to play. Well, anyhow, it's I the one that lets you play, take four gold, and then get an extra action, you're essentially getting four gold for free. An extra action is worth more than the four gold. But maybe not, you say, because you can just take two gold as an action, but hardly anyone does that. You're better off drawing more cards and getting these. That two gold is kind of a desperate maneuver when there's not much else to do. So I like the cards, but they did not always feel balanced. Now, this is just a gut thing. I don't have any numbers to back them up. The cards seem to be balanced. This one gives you six. This one gives you eight, but everyone else gets two. You know, this one gives you four and two supplies. Yeah, so, uh, well, of course, that one is, 
you know, and two supplies cost four gold. So mathematically, they're all equal. I'm just saying in gameplay, they didn't necessarily feel that way. But that's a very minor quibble. My biggest quibble is with these citizens and outlaws. These are pretty cool, right? I like these. I like that the back, they have like um, their age, how tall they are. You know, it's like a, a, a the, the wanted poster and a little history. That's cool. And I like the idea that you can get these people attracted to your city, but that bribe action, I don't know. You need the bribe action, right? There's, there's two problems with the citizens. First, the wanted people, you're all playing this game of chicken. First person to get 10 gold gets that person who's minus one income. And sure, you can pay six gold to get rid of them, but it's a real pain in the neck. So everyone's just sitting there and waiting and waiting. And I got nine gold. I don't want more than nine gold because I don't want that guy. Finally, someone's like, all right, I'll take the person. Just, I don't like that. That, that, that silly game of chicken to some degree. Having these negative abilities fold around the board isn't fun, especially when you're about to do something and someone, usually you threw a card because that's easier than paying the six gold, sends a character your way. So, eh, that was okay. But the biggest thing is, Many of those secret claims and open claims, you saw the one that was 16 points. That can be the difference between you winning or losing a game, having two people, and on the last turn, someone can steal one from you. I have seen this happen, okay? They don't even know that you have that secret claim. They just want that person because they're worth five points, so why would they not take that person from you? And if they take that person from you, then not only do you lose the five points that they just stole from you, but you also lose those open and secret claims. And there's a little bit of that, like, take that to this game, and also, just the fact that you got to kind of watch these like a hawk to see who's going where and what has this and what are the claims. So it was a little more fiddly than I would have liked in that regard, but there's a little too much take that. I don't mind getting other people, but when you can basically destroy someone else's game. I mean, a person can literally lose in the last turn because two other people both steal someone from them. They bribe and they take the two people that run away from you and you just lost 10 points plus possibly an open or closed claim. And also the fact that there are these open claims out there and someone might get one pretty quickly and you're like the second to get it, but now you don't get anything and that's what you were working towards and now you have to kind of regroup. I don't feel like it's, I feel like since everybody has the same amount of turns and has cards and, and abilities that they're gonna be able to get points from building the buildings pretty much the same across the board. You'll have different ones and you're building your engine in different ways. So the differential, the thing that's gonna change who wins the game are these cards and or those open and secret claims. And if you get shafted out of those just simply because someone took one from you either maliciously or by accident, seems like a eh, not as much fun to the end of the game. So I love the theme, I love everything, and I think some people are actually gonna really like this. It is a well-designed game, I just feel like this ending thing here is not so cool, and that's where I'm gonna have to draw the line on Saloon Tycoon. Dice Tower Judgment, need ideas, not for me though. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Some PG. Boop. Boop.